Victor's Assembly Church is located along River Road at former Casino Cinema near Kenya Uniform Distributors. To give you offering, send through our in-person number 0722 712 -918. Somebody standing next to you, good morning. How are you? Just share a good morning with them. Ask them, is the blessing working for you? The Bible says that the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. The greatest riches you can have are not the material riches. It is the blessings that come from within, the riches of our heart. And when Solomon was asked by God, what do you want? He said, give me an understanding heart. So as much as we are talking about a blessing, we are not talking of you just having money, just having more cars. They will come. But the greatest blessing that God can give you is an understanding heart. It's a heart that loves people. It's a large heart. Tell your neighbor from this day forward, may you receive the blessing of a large heart. I better have a large heart because when blessings come, the heart will still have space to remain humble. When you have a small heart and many blessings are beyond your heart, you become unapproachable because of what you have. When your beauty is physical and not in the, in the inside, it will overwhelm you. You will begin to walk like you own the world. But when you know what you have is greater on the inside than what is the outside, you will bless the Lord all day long. Can you celebrate God for a great heart? chapter 51 and verse 16. We will pray and then we'll sit down. And those who are watching us online and on TV, God bless you and God do you good. May the Lord bless you and do you good. Amen. So Psalm 51, just give me that for now. Psalm 51. I believe you carried your Bible. Do you have it? You have your Bible. Say, I love my Bible. Are you sure you have it? Some of you are lifting your four fingers. I have not seen any scroll on your hands. So do you love, you have your Bible? Okay, say, I have my Bible and I love my Bible. So if you don't have that one, don't say that. Because we are not sure you have. So God bless you for having, for having it. So I don't know what happened, but let's go to King James. We are in New Living Translation. That is basic for Sunday school. Let Sunday school do that. It is only used, give me New King James so that we to remove desire rest. Okay, can we all read the word of God together? For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. This, O oh God, you will not despise. Go back to verse 16. So that we go. You do not desire sacrifice, or else... So, to Julizeni, if God has no desire for your sacrifice, and even your burnt offering does not make him happy, what does he want? An attack on me? he sacrifice, hataki, he has no desire, he has not requested you to sacrifice. So, what does he look for? Verse 17. The sacrifices of, of God. That means there are sacrifices that are ours. But they are the sacrifices of God. What are they? A broken spirit and a contrite heart. This, O oh God, you will not despise. So if you want to give God a sacrifice, don't give according to your own version. Give the sacrifices of God. And what are they? A broken spirit and a contrite heart. It is not in the form. It is what is happening in the inside. Lift your voice and tell God, give me a broken spirit and a contrite heart. That is what I desire from you. Nipatia moya ulio vunjika mbele zako. Niumbie moyo safi. Niumbie moyo mpia. Moyo wa kunyenyekea.
have your seat in the presence of God. Thank you, our praise and worship. Thank you, Lead Addition, for that wonderful uh, leading in prayer. When we talk about a broken and a contrite spirit, we are not talking of a perfect heart. No. We are not talking of a heart that is forever 24-7 doing the right thing. Neither are we talking of a, of a heart that is always crying and petitioning God. A broken and a contrite spirit is a spirit that is aware of the need of God every time. It is a heart that is aware that I, without God, I can do nothing. It is a heart that is aware, like Moses, where can I go without your presence? It is a heart that continually hungers and desires and runs after the things of God. That is what God is looking for. So it is good we bring our money. It's good we bring everything we bring. But what is the premium? What is the toppest sacrifice you can give? It is a heart connectivity. And I pray that above all things that our heart will be connected with him. That you will not only worship a God you are trying to please. But you will worship a God that is already pleased with you. Oh my God, can I hear an amen? Maneno ya kinywa changu Wacha ya tawaliwe na wewe bwana Maneno, maneno ya kinywa changu the ability to do them but because you desire that he be with you you don't do them there are things you don't say not because you have no words but you want him to be with you and that is what we are calling a blessing you are blessed if God accepts your sacrifice and we already know that the sacrifices he's accepting are not bribes hey they are not bribes. God is looking inside. I pray that in this month we will look inside. Tell your neighbor, look inside. Look inside. do not forgive because we want to appear righteous. We forgive because we want him to be with us. We do not overlook offenses because we have no weapons to fight. Everybody has a tongue that can fight. Some of you, I know you are professional cursors. You can curse somebody until they forget their name. But because of Christ, you choose that he may be with me. I am willing to work on my heart. Sometimes we are busy working on our businesses. Busy working and trying to fix people. Whereas the fixing needs to be done on the inside. Removing the jealousy. Removing the anger. Removing the pride. Pride. Even spirituality can give you pride. Do you know that? Where you feel you can pray more than other people. Positions can spoil people's hearts. 
Some people, the only mistake he did, like Nebuchadnezzar, is give Nebuchadnezzar a position. There are people immediately they have a position. Their heart is out of sync with God. There are other people when material world enters their life, their heart is consumed and drawn away from the Lord. But I pray that in this service, we will draw back with a broken and a contrite spirit. We will be like Job. I came empty and I will go empty. Nothing will stand between me and God. There can be no classes when we understand that what we have, we are only stewards. Can I get a better amen? Tell you about the difference between me and you. Is the heart I have. Are you getting me? Because... How do you explain why some people who are very good continue perishing and others look very bad and they continue winning? The issue is the heart. There are some people who will never show you they are angry, but they are angry at you, but they can kill you. I love the one that shows me. And when they are angry out of place, they tell me, Reverend, I'm sorry. That is a broken spirit. That is a contrite heart. When is the last time you said sorry? Or you are the only one waiting to be told sorry. When you notice you are easily offended by people, it is not people who have a problem, it's you. When you notice people are running away from you, don't always imagine people have a problem. Or you have a spirit of rejection. Check inside. There is something wrong with the heart. Oh my God. Because a good heart is a magnet. So I'll break it down. What is a blessing? The, looking at the dictionary, the, the blessing is only becoming descriptive. They can only say what the blessing, thank you, praise him. They are only describing what the blessing can do. They are saying it is favor, it is prosperity, it is success, it is fertility, it is a gift, it is what brings happiness. But I want to break it down based on biblical knowledge that we may understand what the blessing is. Number one, a blessing is what gives you advance advantage. When you are blessed, somebody say, I am blessed. Ukisema umebarikiwa, what you are basically saying is that no matter where you plant me, I will prosper. No matter what you say to me, you are the one who will be ashamed. Can I get a better amen? Because you are blessed, you already have an advanced advantage. Can I get a better amen? Number two, it is guaranteed flow of good things. When you are blessed, it means there is a guaranteed flow of good things. You are sure that tomorrow will be better than yesterday. You are sure that he knows the way I take and after this way is taken, I shall sing a new song. When you are blessed, you know that even though the rise against you, you will come out the winner. Why? Because I am blessed. Can I get somebody say, I am blessed. So a blessing is what gives you guaranteed flow. It is also what gives you preservation in times of danger. A blessed man will always escape from the arrows of the enemy. A blessed man will always escape from what kills others. And that is why when somebody says the Lord bless you, they are giving you advance advantage. They are already saying you will be preserved. Ha! They are already saying that you have a guaranteed flow. Even though you go to the market, there will be flow. The difference between Isaac and all the others is that he had a blessing. A blessing of his father. Even in famine, he prospered. The difference between Jacob and Esau is that Jacob had a blessing. He, he went for one wife, but he got two. Esau did not have a blessing. There was no inheritance in his father's people. I pray that you will be blessed. I pray that you will be blessed. You are a blessed man because God has chosen to work with you. Ooh. I don't know that you hear me. We know you are blessed if God is working with you. And how do you know he's working with you? Deuteronomy 28. That one you put it on the, on the screen because it's a lot of text. I want us to go through it together. Deuteronomy chapter 28. From verse 1. Give me the New King James Version. Now it shall it come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. I want you to underline diligently obey. Somebody say diligence. It is not just one of, it is a consistent and a conscious and intentional move to obey God. And to observe carefully all his commandments, financial commandments, marital commandments, relationship commandments, all other commandments, you observe all of them. Which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above 
all nations of the earth. I want you to tell your neighbor, nobody is above nations by mistake. Tell neighbor, you are where you are based on your level of obedience. So, you are where you are based on your level of obedience. That is why Jesus said that even when we go to heaven, you will, some will be saying, we preach in your name. I want the apostle. People call me apostle. Jesus will say, mm -hmm, go. Because you are workers of iniquity. Because God is not looking at men to give you credibility. God is marking the obedience of your heart. You may appear busy. What is God's sacrifice? But he told some, he said through Samuel that I desire obedience more than sacrifice. Being busy in church does not mean you're obedient. You can be very busy buying your own curse. Oh my God. Can I get an amen in the house? Somebody say, I am blessed anyhow. I am blessed. So it's saying that the Lord will set you high above all the nations of thee. He will set you high. High. High above. It means that nations will be under your feet. It's very strategic that today we've, we've uh, uh, probably we've had a visitor from a nation we've never heard before. And it is an answer to prayer. What I prayed when I went where I went. I told God I want to see this kind of people. Let the nations be in my hand. I have seen no other nations but these ones I have not seen. He has answered my prayer. Why? He has set you high above all the nations of the it means that you have dominion. Let's go to verse 2. And all these blessings shall come upon you. Can we read the word of God loudly? One, two, go. And all these blessings do like this. Come upon me. Do like this. Overtake me. So you have them and they are a bit ahead of you. Because you obey the voice of have you heard God of late? I pray that you will hear him. I was sharing with the first service. We were doing the street worship. And one consistent name started appearing. That they are saying we are making noise. So when I was here, we were told that that particular place, they have said we are making noise. So I had the Lord just whisper to me. Now that they have said they don't want you, what do you think? That is the voice of God. You will hear him. Tell neighbor, you will hear him. When you're going through issues and God is not speaking, you need to go back to the crossroad and have him tell you. And I told him quietly that, Lord, if they are hindering your move, do as you will. Three days after, 53 years, closed in a day. When you hear the voice of God, nations are under you. Wealth is under you. It is not a place you get by mistake. Somebody say, it is a conscious walk. It is a conscious walk. It is a conscious. If you obey the voice of your God, God has been speaking to so many of you and so many of us. But the problem is, you hear the voice of your mother, your father, and your enemy more than you hear the voice of God. Verse 3. The Bible says, quickly, uh, give us, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. It means geographical blessing. Somebody say geographical blessing. I want you to lift your hand and say, no matter where I am, I am blessed. Whether in Nairobi or out of Nairobi, I am blessed. Whether in Kenya or out of Kenya, the blessing of the Lord is mine. Verse 4. This one I want you to be very active because we are declaring. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. And the procedure of the ground and the increase of your heart. The increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Verse 4 is talking about biological blessings. It means that your body will be blessed. I pray that even when you need healing, that your body shall accept the healing of the Lord. There will be no disease that cannot be cured. Why? Because you have a biological blessing. Somebody say, good health is my portion. Leave those hands and say, good health is my portion. Because I am blessed. Shout three times, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. The other blessing in this scripture is the blessing of the wild. It says that the increase of, no, actually, uh, before we go to the blessing of the wild, it is the blessing of life. Anything that is living will obey you. I had a very interesting a story from my mom because she's been taking care of cows and goats and she told me that there are particular cows you can buy 
that drink their, suck their own milk. Have you ever had something like that? Like you buy a cow, it gives birth to a cow. And then it has a strategic way of putting his leg up and suck all the milk. The devil is a liar. <laughs> Read it. Online, it's there. And what happens when you have no blessing? You will only target the cows that suck. So I don't know why there is no milk. Kube, the cow, you are not allowed to eat of the fruit of the cow. The cow produces it and drinks it. And that is how many of us have been. You start a business, it sucks itself. It is the absence of a blessing. You get a marriage, it sucks itself. That means the womb of domesticated animals is closed. Any one of you desiring to rear animals, to rear pigs, they will produce. I can't hear you. That is why you require the blessing. And God gave priests and said, this is how you shall bless the children of Israel. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord give you peace. May the Lord cause your bands to overflow with abundance. Because it is not automatic that you are a pig farmer that you will harvest. It is not automatic that you have chicken that they will produce. While other farmers, their chicken are producing double eggs. I remember when my father was, was having a lot of chicken and goats and all that. They used to, most of the times you have to, used to have twins. You know, one goat produces twins. A, 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 a chicken would produce double eggs. When the blessing of the Lord is in your house, your animals begin to produce double. I can't hear you, amen. It, and what does that mean? It means that when the blessing is there, the force of increase is already working in your life. May you be blessed. Verse 5. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Your bank account is your basket. Your granary is your basket. Wherever you store your refrigerator is your basket. It shall be blessed. Verse 6. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. Your times and seasons. Whether in the morning, you are blessed. Whether in the evening, you are blessed. Either way, all year round, you are blessed. Verse 7. The Lord will cause your enemies to rise against you. It means that as long as you are alive, even if you are blessed, enemies will rise. Tell your neighbor, when your enemies will rise against you, they will be defeated before your face because you are blessed. Not because you know how to do spiritual warfare. Not because you fast more. Not because you know all this spiritual jargon. But because you are blessed. Because the blessing is a container. When you are blessed, it means that all these things flow from within you. Oh God. They shall come out against you one way. But they will flee before you seven ways. One disease will come, but will flee with ten different things. To flee with anti-prosperity, with death, with affliction, with enemies, everything. It means that one temptation will give you seven testimonies. I declare in this service that every temptation in your life, let it give you seven testimonies. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You just lost a cow, but you will get a wife, you will get a throne, you will get a prophet, you will get a piece of land, you will get an estate, and you will get a kingdom. Can I get a better amen? You will only kill Goliath, but you will become a musician, become a priest, become a prophet, become the father, the grandfather of Jesus, become a leader of Israel, become a patriarch, and the God of David. It is called the blessing. It is called the blessing. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Open your mouth and say every enemy against my life. Produce seven testimonies. Produce seven testimonies. Waki kuindu kia na jia moja inaleta ushuhuda saba. Era bagada basataba Era mangana mama ma In Jesus name talking of Abraham the only thing Abimelech did was to take away Sarah but when he took Sarah the bible records I even like it when he took Rebecca that even all the cows everything in that kingdom started to miscarry in Babylon and immediately after that they started saying this man is of a different kind he started enjoying dominion in a foreign land why because he is blessed when they rise against you it is an opportunity for seven testimonies 
wakikuinukia kazini wacha kuona shetani ona milango saba ona milango saba ona milango saba wakikujia na jia moja no seven breakthroughs are on the way can i prophesy to somebody that i is having an enemy rising against you i declare in the name of jesus receive your seven testimonies this week I say receive your seven testimonies this week. Receive your seven testimonies this week. Tell three people receive your ten seven testimonies this week. Waki kuinukia mara moja ngotea maushuhuda saba. Wacha kungojea kuharibika kwako. Wacha kungojea mambo itaharibika. Waki kuinukia ni ishara mirango saba imefunguliwa. In the balcony, I can hear you. Woo. When they shall come against you one way, they will flee before you seven ways. Verse 8. The Lord, let's all read together one to go. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your and in all. If you look at all these commandments, blessings of obedience, they are pegged to a principle that God has given. This looks like Malachi 3.10 principle. That the Lord will command the blessing in your storehouse and in all which you set your hand and you bless you in the land which the Lord is giving. Who is giving you the land? Who is blessing the land? Yes, verse 9. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself just as he has sworn to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Verse 10. Then all uh -uh, I can't hear you. They shall be afraid of God or you. Let's all read again. They shall be afraid. What is my fear you? And no matter where you go, they fear you. What is that making them fear you? It is called the blessing. So there are like 10 things that I've identified in these scriptures. Number one, it is called geographical blessing. Number two, biological blessing. Number three, the blessings of living things. Number, uh, number four, the blessings, blessings in your storehouse. Number five, time agreeing blessings or season conforming blessings. You can call them season conforming, whether in the morning or in the evening, you're blessed. Number six, victory in battle. Victory in battle. That is a blessing. Number seven, abundant prosperity. Increase. Abundant prosperity. Number nine, open heavens. Number, sorry, number eight, open heavens. Open heavens. Number seven, is it number seven? Number nine, dominion. So geographical blessing, biological blessings, blessings of the living things, blessing in your storm houses, time conforming blessings, victory in battle, abundant prosperity, open heavens, dominion, and finally, headship anointing. You shall be the head and you shall not be the tail. Give me verse 11. You shall be the head and not be the tail. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock and the produce of your ground, and in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. That seems like abundant prosperity. Verse 12. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain in your land in a season and to bless all the work of your hands. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. That also means open heavens. It means that wherever you go, people at the ground is willing to bless you. And finally, verse 13. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed to the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe. So how do we access this blessing? 
the title of my message, my message is the blessings of obedience. The blessings of obedience. When you obey God, it means that you qualify to enjoy the blessing. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Sacrifice is going an extra mile. God does not want you to go an extra mile. He only wants you to follow what he has told you to follow. In Micah chapter 6 verse 8, obedience is not strange to any one of us. It says he has taught you, O man, what is good and what is acceptable before the Lord your God. Micah 6 8. So what God is asking you to obey is not strange to you. You already know. It is in the principle of the word of God. Proverbs 21 and verse 3. Give me to Proverbs 21 and verse 3. Minister Moses, you are reading for me the scriptures. And also Hosea chapter 6 and verse 6. I will read Hosea. Get me Proverbs 21 verse 3. It says, For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. God is desiring obedience more than all the other things that we value. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Another version says to obey. There is a version that says, for I desire my... There is another version that says obedience. I'm not sure which one it is. God is desiring obedience. Anytime you hear a blessing, a blessing is always tied to, to obedience. When a blessing is what you get after obedience, and you only obey what you have heard, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. The knowledge of God more. What you know of God is what you will obey. The lesser of him you know, the lesser you will obey. And then the most, you know, confined your blessings will be. So, once we are aware of this, then can I break it down? What should, what are the conditions or, or how can we know that you're walking in obedience? How can we help you walk in obedience to the word of God? I want you to know that we obey God. Obedience is considered by God like an awareness that he is too faithful to fail you. We obey God once we know, when we are aware that he is too faithful to fail. We disobey him because we do not have faith that what he has promised he will do. So many people fail to obey because they are not aware of his faithfulness. They are not sure that he's consistent in his word. But God is consistent. God is dependable. He is trustworthy. They that know him will continue obeying him. And the more you obey him, the more blessings you enjoy. Can I get an amen from somebody that is saying God is too faithful to fail me? Can you say God is too faithful to fail me? Are you sure you are aware of that? He has never failed once. He will not begin with you. But the problem is we say we believe in God. But in the time of need, we are not consistent with what we say. We know that he can never fail me. My father and my mother may forsake me, but the Lord will never let me go. My enemies will come against me, but I have faith in God that what he has said he will do is what he will do. He has said that there is balm in Gilead. There is no sickness he cannot heal. As long as I am in him, I know he shall heal me. That is not based on emotion. It is based in the confidence that you know he's too faithful to fail you. I came to encourage you this morning that your obedience is based on what you know about God. The reliability, the determinability, the trustworthiness, the dependence, or the dep how God is dependable in times of need. I will magnify the Lord, David says, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will magnify the Lord. So David knew that I, will, I am guaranteed of victory because the God that I serve, as long as I magnify him, I will continue on winning. As long as I bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me is blessing his holy name. Even if they come against me in one way, they will be scattered seven directions. As you obey the principle of praise, the principle of gratitude, the principle of who he is, and understand the attributes of God that is too faithful. He's too faithful. He's too faithful. He's too faithful. He will not fail. He has never failed. He will never fail. He remains the 
same. That is why we will obey him. Because as we obey him, he is too faithful to fail. I can hear you shout a better amen. Has God been faithful to you? Somebody say he's too faithful to fail me. Once God gives you an instruction, I want you to go and give your car to so and so. I want you to give you this piece of land to reverence. Hi. The problem is not God. The problem is you. You begin to say, eh? and after I give, what will my children do? Now, if people hear I gave reverend this plot, and I don't even have a house of my own, People will think I'm brainwashed. What is the enemy doing? He's making, he's, he's, he's easily baiting you out of obedience. Because disobedience have logical explanations. Tell your neighbor, anytime you are disobey, you have believed the lie of the devil. Oh, I was there when I would hear the Lord say, not a lot of money, give 1,000 to that person. I've not paid rent. I know. Ah! You give it and say, God, you're unfair. But after I grew up, I now knew that it is an honor for the Lord to ask anything from me. He is not hungry. If he was hungry, he would not ask me. He has made me a channel. What I have can reach everybody. But there are some people God knows. If he wants it to die, he'll give it to you. So he'll avoid you at all costs. Because God is a God of multiplication. Say, neighbor, may God find you worthy. Kuna watu mungu anakupea tu pesa ya kukutosha. Na kutosha watoto. Kosa najua kikupea imezidi haitafikia watu. Na kama iko imeka hivyo for so many years, you need to recheck your level of obedience. Ata, what a basic level ya tithing. Ata even just giving. You even don't like giving people simple favors. Ata watu wakikuja kwa kukazini umekasirika like the, the assistant of Satan. You can't even give a smile. It is the basic thing you can give. Are we communicating? Once you hear the voice of the Lord and you know him, you know he's too faithful to fail you. And that is why obedience becomes easy. So many people disobey because they don't know him. Anytime I see you disobeying, I know you don't know him. If you know him, you will never disobey him. Because what he says is what he will do. If he tells you, try me, and you will see that I am God. If he says, test me with your tithes and your offerings, and you will see. If you know him very well, you will dare him. But if you don't know him, ni pastor anakura. Ni pastor aliadika Bible. Serve me, and you will spend your days in prosperity. And none of your, nothing that belongs to you shall cast their eye. The number of your days you will fulfill. Mimi, ni kona watoto wakulea. Staki kutumika kanisani, Continue. But utawalea wachukuruwe na mutu mwingine, harusi ya watoto wako ni mutu mwingine atawapeana. I refuse. I want to live long. I want to live long. I pray that as you raise your children, a stepmother will not represent you. I can't hear your amen. And that does not happen by wishful thinking. It is a blessing as you obey a principle. With long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Your wife will not get married to another man and another man or your brother will give over your daughter. Ah! Are you not getting annoyed? It is called the blessing. Somebody say the blessing. Where you till a land and people will harvest everything on your behalf because you will be too crippled. I refuse. I refuse. There is a principle. And once you know God is too faithful and he knows what he's doing, you obey him unconditionally. You tell him, I don't know what you're doing, but I trust you, you are an adult. Eh, hey, ajira yako kama mungu wako ni mtoto Anavunja vunja agano Wangu ni machua He's a grown God He's a grown God My God is a God of his word He's a man of his word What he says is what he will do He cannot rob from me What he has already given me Ah Kaide iaga Mungu hawezi jiba Wezi mtea mtoto chocolate Alamu wende usiku uva umotipto can you do that? Your God is too faithful. He will not give you a car and also take it away from you. He is too faithful to fail. He is too faithful to fail. Ah, 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 ah. What else are you 
nikamwambia kama hakuna kelele wewe misisikibuka ubaie mtoto chocolate tuseme ni faith ubaie chocolate na umpe aweke akiweka sasa wewe ungojea harare saa nane. utipto uende uimbe chocolate ya mtoto asubuhi aanze kulia nani alichukua mama sema no i gave it. god is not like that god is not wicked you yourself are a gift to him he, if god was to steal he would not steal from you Ah, if there is any theft and burglary left in him and there can never be his righteous he will not steal from you so once he gives you a principle it is an enabler it is to create an environment it is to create a legal premise upon which he will bless you because he does not want to bless you if you don't want it ai sijui tuelewane mungu anajuaga unataka muende na yeye ukimtii kama humtii anajua umuhitaji unaweza make na wewe si make bila yeye naweza bila wewe si lazima tuende na wewe you will be saying that in your actions when he tells you to do something and you don't do it what you are telling him lord i can handle this on my own i don't need you watch and see what i will make and that's why after you do that god does not great credit inakuwa ni wewe tunakuona because anything that comes out of obeying god has referential fear towards him you will become like paul what do i have that you have not given me who shaba i pray that we will be too conscious of his faithfulness i want you to open your mouth and tell god any time that i have failed to recognize of your faithfulness any time i've underrated you some of us have negative thoughts towards god because of our dealing with men i want to clear the record of god He's too faithful to kill it to fail you. God is not con man. He cannot steal from himself. We are his and we belong to him. He will not ask you to steal from you. He is only looking for a way to bless you. Open your mouth and tell him, "Lord, I surrender my heart. I come back to the place of depending on you." I can hear you. I can hear you. In Jesus name take your seat again. So we obey because we know God is too faithful to fail. He cannot steal from you, neither does he make mistakes. Number 2, because we know that his instructions are not burdensome. Amri zake, his laws, his instructions, they are not burdensome. If you feel serving God is a burden, it is not God you are serving. you are giving a sacrifice it is not acceptable any time you are walking in obedience it is no longer a sacrifice it is a joy it is a joy it is a joy you say what can i do to make you happy god you have been so gracious his instructions are not burdensome tell your neighbor for me his instructions are not burdensome as i say his yoke is easy and his burden is light When God speaks to you, kitu moja inaondokaga ni uoga. We know God speaks to you if you have no fear. We know God has spoken to you if you know that you know. But any time you hear from yourself or from the devil, utakuwa unavuruta miguu because you are not sure. But any time God speaks, when he speaks, him speaking to you is a transfer of power to enable you do what he wants you to do. When he spoke to us to be in this church, I can tell you we, if he told me with the awareness I have of what opening a church is I would have thought twice. But once he speaks to you he gives you the ability to do it. And everybody else seeing you on the outside will think it's easy but actual sense it is easy but not because I'm working but because he's the one working behind the scenes. His instructions are not burdensome. If there is a burden towards it know that you are still a baby. Mzoto ndio ata like young boys Kibarua moja nimeona with my sisters who have boys is getting boys to shower. Ah, putting a boy to the bathroom I've realized is a cat and mouse game. Those who are mother of boys if I'm saying that to shout amen. Kuwafanya waoge inakuwa kibarua. Boys have a way of getting away with the bathroom. True or false? It's true. Okay. Ume brush because that's that's the way it is. It's bad and some But obeying God is never meant to be burdensome. He cannot tell you 
what he knows. God does not give casual instructions. God downloads principles that will make you move forward. What you think is sip to you is mega to God. Because if God will leave all his throne and his dignity and all the power and talk to you, it must be important. Tell anybody, but don't trivialize what God tells you. Because first it was fragrant, then it turned to fire. My worship is a, this is how I win my bar. God will begin with a still small voice. You're almost wondering, is it me? Is it him? Is it me? You even shake your head like this. And then he will become louder and louder as you obey. Hello? Because there are some people God cannot appear to you in person. You will die before you arrive there. Moses began an encounter with God through the burning bush. It was his introduction to obedience. The burning bush. The first instructions he was given, remove your shoes. The place you are standing is holy. Kama ni wengine wetu, viatu natoa kwa nini? Nikitoa si nitachomeka. Si the bush is burning. Na unaniambia nitoe via? Nivefanyo pedi kiwa juzi. God, are you serious? But he obeyed. After he obeyed, God started introducing himself. He now started to talk into him through the road and through miracles until he started speaking to him with a still small voice until he became loud. Where he would even tell Moses, go call all the people. Let me show you whose son you are. Let them show them whose son you are. Ha! I pray that we will all get there. Where God will be calling for meetings to close a hotel just like that. Are you getting it? Tell your neighbor, it's a level. You must get there. But kama mungu waezi kuwaminia 1,000. Hata kuwaminia je mataifa na vijiji. The last instruction you received. Tuwa hiyo nguo. Wendo upe mama nani. To this day, you've never given that dress. Umezekea wardrobe. What would make God tell you to go to a building and possess it? If you cannot give a dress, who will enter that building and be blessed? You'll be the landlord that will be standing at the gate. Eh? Eh? Tell me where you work. Even when people are defaulting in rent, it's like you are born with money in your hand. But when you know it's a blessing of the Lord, even when you are a landlord, you are full of mercy. You are full of grace. You don't embarrass people. I pray because we are so many landlords here. Let, be, let grace be upon your lips. Wacha mtu aseme nilipofutwa kazi huyu landlord alinipea nyumba nikae free 6 months. Because hata ukimfukuza si nyumba inakaa empty. Hakuna mali utapeleka watu. You can't force people to come. So once you know that, you know it's a blessing of the Lord and you're a steward. Can I get a better amen? Can I get a better amen? Somebody say his instructions are not bad and some. What he tells me is within my ability to do. Stop limiting yourself. If he tells you he wants you to pray two hours, he knows he has given you time, he has given you power, he has released all the resources that you need to do it. Don't be like Gideon, I am the least. Jeremiah, I cannot do it. Because when you think like a man and refuse to see it from God's points of view, you deny yourself a moment of obedience. I want you to go before God and tell him, Lord, where I've not obeyed you, where your instructions have been burdensome, I align my heart with your heart. It is a heart alignment service. Bow your heads and pray. Bwana asifiwe sana. My name is Reverend Ruth Wamoyo on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. All you need to do is just go to my page, like, and follow me. And to my YouTube channel, I'm Ruth Wamoyo. Just go there and hit the red subscribe button. You will receive the latest music, the sermons, the gorgeous woman show, divine encounter, and all the services, even lunch hour services. God bless you as you do that.